Hey class, I'm just going to do a quick video here to run through the meiosis lab that we're doing in lab with our beads. Okay, so that you guys can actually see how they would be moving, at least the best of my ability, on this um, lovely video. So what we're looking at here is a very generic animal cell. Okay, big round nucleus in the middle, right? That's about as much as we need to worry about right now. So what you notice is that our cell has a nucleus, which is the little green pipe cleaner here, and it has four chromosomes. It has a long yellow, a short yellow, a long red, and then a short red. Now before meiosis can even start, um, interphase is going on, right? So we have to have DNA synthesis. So to synthesize our DNA, we're just going to add in another one of these duplicated chromosomes while it's still inside the nucleus, right? Our nucleus has not yet disappeared. So as we move into prophase, what's going to happen is our nucleus will begin to disappear. So wah, wah, moving the green pipe cleaner out of the picture. So now what we have is our four chromosomes. They are condensing and they are floating free inside the cell. Now during meiosis, one of the things we do in the cell in order to help with our genetic diversity during prophase one is called our crossing over event. Now during crossing over, we're gonna have the chromosomes from our mom and from our dad that are going to become close to one another. So these are gonna have to be our homologous chromosomes. So we have our little guys and our big guys that are gonna stand next to each other. Right, so this is what we call our tetrad, right? So they're gonna find each other, again, still in prophase, and they're going to potentially exchange some information. Okay, so what will happen is the chromosome from mom and dad are gonna cross over one another. Okay, they may do it in a couple of places, and they're actually going to exchange their DNA. Okay, so if we pull off three of the yellow, it will exchange with three of our red, and that will give us a relatively unique uh, chromosome. So if we do that on the other side, again, we'll just go ahead and do three red and three yellow. This is going to represent our exchange of reciprocal DNA. So if we do that on our shorter guys, we'll just go ahead and take two yellow two red and flip-flop them. Remember, reciprocal means that these are going to be the same genes. So if this chromosome is carrying eye color, so is this one. So now we've just swapped our eye color, so they have to be genes coding for the same types of proteins. So now we're still in prophase, and we are going to line up moving into metaphase. Now in metaphase we go into, um, we line up our tetrads along the metaphase plate. Okay, so let's say our metaphase plate is running right down the center here. Our chromosomes are going to line up on either side of that metaphase plate. Okay, now notice when they line up, there's no rhyme or reason. Okay, we've got one red on this side, one red on that side. Um, we could have it so that there's one, two reds on one side, two yellows on the side. Okay, so it really doesn't matter. This is what we call independent assortment, which is going to happen during um, metaphase one, during meiosis one. So right now we're on either side of our metaphase plate, and we're going to move into anaphase one. Now during anaphase, we're going to see the tetrads separate from one another as they get pulled to the poles using the spindles, just like we see in mitosis. So right now, here we are pulled apart in anaphase, and we're going to see our chromosomes pull back together on either side, and they're going to form, you know, their nucleus, kind of, sort of. So as we're going to move from telophase 1 in meiosis 1 into prophase 2 in, my, my, in meiosis 2, um, we see a very quick phase, right? So really the nucleus forms, but not quite. Right? We're going to get rid of it again. Okay, so we have gone into two cells. So cytokinesis has formed, and we have our chromosomes in one cell and our other chromosomes in the other cell. Now notice we separated the tetrads. We did not separate the sister chromatids. 
Okay, so we're gonna move into prophase one. Again, very quick. We're gonna have the nucleus form and disappear. We're gonna have the DNA condense back up. Now, as we move into metaphase two, we're gonna see our sister chromatids line up along our metaphase plate. So here our metaphase plate is gonna run right down the middle. And we see that these line up very similarly to how they lined up during mitosis. Our sister chromatids are gonna line up end to end in both cell one and in cell two. Now during anaphase, we are going to separate these. So during anaphase two, we're gonna pull apart our sister chromatids so that we have them on each side of, again, cell one and cell two. And as we move into telophase, we're gonna begin the reformation of our nucleus and end it with cytokinesis so that we have one, two, three, four separate cells. Now we're also gonna see a nucleus form around each one of these as our DNA is gonna kinda of condense in the center of each one of these cells. And what you can notice from this is that we have one cell that has a small red but with a piece of the yellow and one normal big yellow. One short red, normal, and a yellow that has pieces of red on either side. So each one of these, what I'm saying here, is they're completely unique. Not one of these is going to be the same. And that is how we're going to form the egg and the sperm in humans and animals, or the egg and the pollen in plants. Each one of these is perfectly unique and also a haploid cell.